I am Eva O, and this is the Teaking Podcast. I have been a dominatrix since 2011, and I would like to spill the tea on my life. Thank you for listening. So an update on my journey into being an AI companion. Hmm. Let's say a part of it went up in literal flames. <laughs> Where I am at right now. Do I start there? No. So if you've been following the series, which started a while ago, you would have known or you would know that some billionaires, some Chinese billionaires approached me about becoming an avatar and that sparked some thoughts of my own and I started to explore things ethically and personally, how I felt about it. And I was then approached by a company that was representing some really big porn stars and some really huge vanilla personalities. I'm not sure how much I can go into that, even though, yeah, it's... um pretty much all gone to shit in some ways. But, uh, and then I've also, yeah, I did a, like a GPT of myself for a little while that got taken down, but that was pretty interesting. And I've also been doing some development of stuff by myself. But I think the last update that you got was that I had signed with a company, perhaps, maybe I didn't update you. Maybe I didn't update you. But I had signed with this big ma major company, right? And they had been doing, what, like six-figure weeks with some of their porn stars. And I was really looking forward to it. I recorded a bunch of um, qu answers to some questions they had with my voice. I gave them a bunch of photos. They were going to be able to generate photos uh, of myself according to what people were looking for and you were kind of paid by the generation and the uh, amount of time that they sort of spent in the chats. But as the time was approaching for them to be able to deliver this and to launch my AI, they, uh, <laughs> they were just not really being very responsive. And so I emailed my point of contact and it bounced. And then I emailed the lead and it bounced. And when I messaged the lead privately, I got like a screenshot of a standardized response that they had basically been fired and it was out of their control. And so I immediately go to the social medias and see that the owner of the company has fired everybody and is posting every couple of minutes, I, this is no exaggeration, a story or a tweet or something about some sort of conspiracy on the, on the <laughs> public company account. <laughs> And I immediately called the lawyers who were, had uh, negotiated the contract for me and said, what the fuck do I do? <laughs> and they start like emailing uh, the, their lawyers who we find out have not been paid. And um, yeah, and then at some point it, uh, my contract gets terminated. I like, I don't know what the fucking lawyers did. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, um, because they didn't deliver anything essentially. And I am free of that. And I quickly get rid of all the shared files as much as I can. And that is that. And the next thing that I hear a few weeks down the line is that the <laughs> owner has lit the, the, their building on fire and is like put in jail. And so cannot answer any emails. <laughs> so, so yeah, that was my first sort of contract in order to try to become an AI companion. <laughs> the things that happen in the early days of technology, huh? 
And so I go about trying to build my own. And actually, it gets to an interesting point where it's really sounding like me. And we're not doing any image generation, but we are doing a really lovely chatbot that was primarily focused on making sure that people get uh, more, less of the not safe for work stuff, which I do on my OnlyFans um, in person, but more of an interest in giving the people who are interested in coaching a space. So, because I think a lot of you end up, you know, the people who want to engage with me in a smutty way, (laughs) we have the OnlyFans and we are there and we've been there and that's great. And I'm happy with that. But I feel like there's a space that I can't give to that is more in the coaching space. And I have my coaching sessions that I give, but a lot of these questions are kind of repeated um, with slight tweaks. And I thought that the bot could be good for that more than the smart stuff, actually. I feel like once the image and the video generation gets to a really good place with the smart stuff, then it's going to be interesting for me. But if it's just chat at the moment, we have that, you know? So I don't know. It didn't really feel like something I wanted to focus on as much, although it wouldn't have been too much of a tweak, I guess, to do that. But then to advertise, it would have been a bitch also. (laughs) But anyway, so we got this chatbot going pretty nicely for the coaching angle, for the philosophical sort of angle. And then it just would like bug out here and there and everywhere. And my costs already were so high to to build this thing and then to try to maintain it, that it just kind of made me realize that, you know what, I don't know whether this was ever going to be that big a moneymaker anyway, unless I had like tacked it on to some courses or whatever, which I don't necessarily feel great about. I love the mentoring, but I, I don't, I don't know whether a course is really something that's my thing. So yeah. So I'm kind of at a stalemate with it at the moment. I've been approached by some other companies, but again, um, and they're more smutty, but I kind of feel like if they don't have their image and their video generation really going, I don't know whether I'm that interested yet. So that's where we are right now. A part of my AI companion dreams went up in literal flames. Great dramatic effect. Hated it, but also loved it. (laughs) I tried it out on my own and realized that you just got to keep pumping in the money to do any little startup thing. And it wasn't maybe necessarily where my heart was at right now. I'm waiting to see if some of these other people who have approached me get their features together and stable because I don't need more flames. <laughs> and in the meantime, I'm becoming really good with the chat GPT, <laughs> who is helping to maybe sometimes guide my thoughts about what I should be doing next. And so it is sort of integrating in a way <laughs> to make me a version of my own AI-fueled companion to you, self. <laughs> But I haven't given up hope. I just want to see the technology stabilized just a little bit in terms of what I think is going to be um, of value to you and therefore to me. And I have thought about maybe using some concepts of it in an installation space, like in an art installation space, something similar to my ultimate fantasy episode, if you listen to that or go back and listen to it, like kind of recreating something that using technology. So maybe that would be a thing. But that's just a little update of where I'm at and the journeys of uh, moving into AI companionship. (laughs) Wish me luck for the next chapter at this point point in time it's a little bit of a waiting game and uh until then you know where to find me (laughs) and i'll speak to you next time